The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It feels like life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. My life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. This is true. Oh, it's better, it's better with two. My life. Oh, it's better with you. Hell. Everybody and welcome to my brother and brother, me and advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin Tyler McElroy. Uh, let me check my show notes here. Yes, I am your middlest brother, Travis Big Dog. Ooh, woof woof McElroy. And this is Griffin McElroy on the cutting edge of tech technology news. Ha- what's yep. happening? What's the big headlines for technology news today? New computers. Yes. yes. New. Yeah. Uh, there's a new Have you seen computers these days? Because it used to be they took up like a whole football oh, field basement. So, and yeah. now you can hold those dang things in the palm of your hand and eat them. And then there's Sony's got a new cyber glove, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about cyber the, glove for cyber love. Yeah, it's for a jacking. But today we're talking about the biggest news of all. And that's freaking. Y'all heard of a little website called Facebook? That you yeah, go to Nani's to see old it. old pictures. Yeah, it's got Nani. This one that Nani's on. It's got Nani and all those old high schoolers that you went to it's school with. It's got eight with, you... eight of our Nani's because she keeps getting hacked. Oh my god! Yeah, okay, step outside the bit for a second. She does get hacked a lot though. She gets hacked all the time. She she our clicks Nani's everything. Number one <laughs> target. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean she's got. Hey, many... if any of you are listening, please don't hack our Nani Stop anymore. <laughs> we know she's there got. There can't a lot be of... anything left there for you. Statistically speaking, most of you have hacked our Nani. Uh, at least one of you has. Hey, I also want to say, so I don't get a bunch of tweets about it. I sound different this week because I'm. I had a power outage at my home, and I'm here in my wife's clinic recording the podcast. This looks like the old days. Yeah. and he's doing a the good old. He's days. doing a little bit of medicine help for people who come. I'm in. doing a couple band aids and what have you. Yeah. Um. So anyway, big tech news, exciting thing. This big Facebook website that Arnani keeps getting hacked on because she has so much fucking Bitcoin. Uh. <laughs> is that it's gonna? It's not gonna be a uh, Facebook anymore, and because that's been the problem. The that's problem been the with problem. Facebook is the name. Yeah, yeah I know yeah. that the there's been a lot of sort of reports about how they have uh, fostered an environment that is good for hate speech, but um, mm-hmm. yeah. but that's all gonna be different now because it's not gonna be hate speech Facebook anymore. It's gonna be something even cooler and safer and nicer. You know how Google uh, their their company motto is like don't be evil yeah don't do bad Fa- stuff facebook's is like fuck it let's get it wet right yeah. <laughs> that's what facebook's whatever it takes is. is their is their motto <laughs> yeah um, facebook's now, facebook's motto is a rhetorical question it's just what are you gonna do but <laughs> google changed theirs the company that owns google and all the various google paraphernalia the, the including teengoogle.com <laughs> yeah, especially teengoogle.com is me no, teengoogle.com is me. Uh, they changed the alphabet. And it'll be tough for Facebook to find something that sounds as sinister as alphabet. Yeah. Right. So What about the Facebook? That's strong. Mm, that's strong. Because right? then that's definitive, right? Because it's been so wishy-washy, like, oh, let's check Facebook. And you're like, which one? Right? And if you were just like, oh, check the Facebook. And you're right. like, oh, That would okay. be an issue. No, no, no. Okay, we're not changing the name of Facebook. It's very important here that we're clear about this. Facebook will continue to operate in its own special way okay. that is so good for everybody as Facebook. The company that owns Facebook and Oculus and Instagram and, you know, probably 35 different ad companies uh, will change its name. The parent company. Oh, okay. So okay. then just change it to Facebook Senior. Yeah. To Facebook's dad. Yeah, this Facebook's dad, Facebook Senior, Mister Facebook. So that way, Facebook can say, "No, please call me Facebook." Mister Facebook is my father. 
good Facebook would be neat because then it's like you don't have to sweat like the ethics of it. It lets you know right there on the tin. Of course, there would have to be some behavioral changes yeah. there. What about no. really? It's all branding. That's what about fair. Mr. Zucker's old time internet palace? Yeah, that's huh. cool. That's got a like. That's got a, a real GeoCities Ret- vibe that I'm into. Yeah, retro. How about O'Callahan's authentic Irish pub and Family Fun Center? Oh, I like that. That's, that kicks ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If it was, if if you are not going to think there's anything weird about Facebook, if it's suddenly one day. Uh, uh, officially owned by O'Callaghan's Ir- authentic Irish pub and family fun center. Yeah, that's true. That's good. I'm they should to- sell it to Jolly Pirate Dota. Yeah. Wait. So, <laughs> sell, <laughs> sell ownership. Sell ownership of Facebook. Yeah. The company to Jolly Pirate Dota, and then operate as like Jolly Pirate Dota is the company that owns Facebook and Instagram. Facebook, a Jolly Pirate production. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You'd be like a lot more down with it, and yeah. I mean, it'd be cool to work there and get um, donut, like free donuts. Yeah. And it would be nice for Nani to know that on the twelfth time she got hacked, the thirteenth one is free. <laughs> <laughs> a baker's a baker's dozen hacks. Uh huh. Um, I mean, Zuck's place could be fun. Zuck's place is good. I that like would be, that. That would be a better name for the plat. See, I feel like they're going to find a new name for the company, and they're going to be like, well, this is so good. We got to change the website's name to Zuck's place. A place for <laughs> Zuck to come and hang out and let loose. Maybe Fud Zuckers. Fud Ooh, Zuckers Fud Zuckers. <laughs> Fud Zuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of the joke here. There's not a joke. It's just, it's just a good. That fun, Zuck, fun Zuckers would be a- <laughs> What about Dave and Zuckers while we're at it? That's fine. <laughs> Zucky Cheese. <laughs> so Zucky Cheese is good. Uh-huh. That's okay. <laughs> These are also good. We'll use that. And Oculus will become Zucky Cheese. Yes. Uh, Facebook will be Fud Zuckers, of course. <laughs> and and Instagram will be Dave and Zuckers. Perfect. All all of which are subsidiaries of Zuck's place. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all which are owned by O'Callahan's Authentic <laughs> Irish Club. <laughs> so awesome. There. So you open up Zuck's place. And it's a yep. it's like an animated GIF of a map unscrolling, and it's like which which of Zuck's amazing experiences would you like to dive into today? And it's like, oh, do you want to do you want to hack Clint McElroy's mom? <laughs> Good news! <laughs> Good news! And you click on it, and it's like a Club Penguin mini game. <laughs> That's cool. That's awesome. I want I want all that shit on like let's not just limit it to Facebook and Oculus and uh, and, and Instagram and all that like let's get Neopets on there but they're called Z- uh, Zucky Beasts and then there you, you can go. trade them and have fun with them and that would be cool <laughs> Mother Zuckers uh-huh. yeah now you don't like this. what 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 would Mother Zuckers be just the 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 Neopets thing. Oh, because they're uh, like a virtual character. Little, little, little mother Zuckers. Yeah. All right. Hey, can we do a garbage pail kid Mark Zuckerberg thing? What would if they bought Facebook? If Z- if Hands Up at the Irish Pub and Family Fun Center bought um garbage pail kids. Yeah. What would be a fun joke to say? About, about Facebook? About like what kind of name could you get Zuck into? Garbage pail kid. Oh, you're saying like what's like a dirty joke? I don't have a. I don't have like a joke. Wild. For it, then that's a, then that's a wild thing <laughs> you just did, Justin. Yeah. No, I, I was hoping you guys would have like a funny. Hey, what if joke well, you know sometimes on the <laughs> show, Justin, one of us does like a bump set spike kind of maneuver, and what you did is you set the ball in the middle of the floor and said, "Wouldn't it be cool <laughs> if one of you spiked that?" Yeah. Someone figure out how to. Sp- <laughs> you you throw it in a garbage can across the street, and you're like, "Someone figure out how to spike that and get a point." It's like I laid it in a toilet and said, "Imagine." if I had spiked that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. How cool would that be? It's like if there was no ball and you said, imagine if there was a ball in the air and you could spike it. Yeah. <laughs> this, is cool. good, this is good times. This is a good one. This is this good. Is good hey, yeah. thank you to Mark Zuckerberg for encouraging us to do that bit. Um, I'm sorry about everything. We'll You're take your money. Right oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I'm not sorry. For, sorry you I'm fucked up so bad and made things <laughs> so, so Sorry, Griffin. Griffin zucked up. 
It is legally. <laughs> yeah, sorry, not. you zucked up the I'm entire sorry, can fabric. Can we stop for a second? I feel like the zuck sounds like fuck thing is so played. Like oh, I'm sure he's yeah, maybe gotta lean in. Should we go the maybe. other way and say like Mark Fuckerberg? Right? Uh, no, guys, these are too obvious for us. We have we 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 have uh, Mark, Mark Duckberg. What if he replaced himself with a cartoon duck named Mark Duckerberg? And I Is his like brain inside he, the duck? Yeah, he's okay. controlling it like Alter Ego, the the new Alanis Morissette show. Uh huh. Um, I feel like he's controlling it, and it's an animated duck that he controls named Mark Duckerberg. I feel like if they do that, they don't even need to change the name of the company. No, that's going right? to do a lot of PR work for them. Yeah, this is an advice show. I don't know if you've gotten that. Uh, we have a special guest this week. It's very what? exciting. Yeah, it's later though. Don't worry about it. Right now, uh, we're going to help you, and we'll do other things too. But first, the help. I recently started a job that, at certain points, involves driving a big truck that tows an even bigger trailer. Badass. Thanks. Let's take a second. Just badass. That badass, can sound cool. dude. You know, when you see a it's big cool. truck, you're like, that's a big truck. And then you see the even bigger trailer, and you're like, whoa. Whoa, shit. Yeah, real nice. I'm not the biggest fan of this job. Stupid. So I was planning on- Wait, hold on. Keep- Wait, who is stupid? The question I asked Ross. I just think it's stupid. They don't like that job. It'd be like, so cool. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's a yeah. If you smash that truck into anything, it is donezo. Like, that's got to yeah. be empowering. Yeah. Uh, so I was planning on only keeping this job until I found a new one. Unfortunately, my second week on the job, I was towing the trailer on the interstate, and the trailer jackknifed on me. Fuck. The truck rolled twice and landed upside down. I got in one little fight, and my mom got scared. (laughs) Nobody, including myself, was hurt. Okay. But now I feel like I can't quit, because I totaled the truck (laughs) in a trailer. (laughs) Oh, man. Accurate. Brothers, should I stick around a little bit longer, or should I just piece the hell out? That's from Career Confusion to Colorado. That's a sticky wicket. Uh, now, hold on, because I feel like I thought I have a different feeling, it seems, than my brothers do. Because, Justin, it seems that you are of the mindset that it is now difficult to quit after you jackknife and roll the, the truck and trailer. I, on the other hand, think that if you quit, your job will be like, oh, thank God they quit. Yeah, I think <laughs> at God. this yeah. point, your boss would be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You do. You do. I, did, I actually didn't even know you still worked here after you rolled the truck and trailer on your second week. You made a big spectacular exploder uh, on day 14, it says here in your file. So, yeah, it, it makes sense that you wouldn't want to be this You did this what job. we in the business call a truck whoopsie, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that usually is a fireable offense, and we actually just assumed you had quit already. What was in the trailer? Was it something funny? Oh, You know, God. like bouncy balls or like... Oh, boy. Yeah, this is good. This yeah. is good. Where are we going next? Oh, a bunch of like KY jelly. Yeah. Oh! And it spilt all over in... Like all the cars started slip sliding around and like porking. Huh? Uh, uh, yeah. Um. I I think you lost it a little bit. I think you should, if you don't want to drive the big truck anymore because you crashed it pretty much instantly in the grand scheme of things. I feel like that's okay. I feel like you, yeah. they aren't going to keep you there and say like, no, you have to, you have to stay here and do this. Um, because the only problem is you, that you, well, I guess you needed the job for a little bit longer, right? You weren't ready to quit then. Yeah. You didn't want to quit. Cause I was going to say like, that's the moment you jackknife it. Nobody's going to judge you for being like, I'm done. That's it. This Never I'm again. done. It sucks to drive a car this big <laughs> on the same it's road. It's too big of a car. Can I deliver this in a Jetta? Maybe. Is it, God's, I- God's mistake. This giant truck. We went too far as a species. Time to take it back. Um, yeah, you One should, time you I, I got a job at PetSmart, and on my first day of training, halfway through the training session, I uh, got a call letting me know that I was actually supposed to be somewhere to perform uh, a play that they had not told me. It was like, you know, a thing that they sent out for, you know, like the touring thing. And uh, the life of an actor. I know. So mm. I just like walked out of training and my boss was like, where are you going? And I was like, sorry, I just got a call. I got to be somewhere else. Be back tomorrow. And when I came back the next day, they didn't fire me. So let that Damn. and this question be a combined sign to you, the listener. It's actually a lot harder to get fired from things than you would think. That's like the end of rent, Trav. I if mean, you, I guess. If you think about it. It's basically what rent's about. Um, hey, do you all want to talk to the wizard or the cloud? Call him up real quick. Yeah. All right, you know what? How come he never calls us? 
Good point. Um, Good question. I mean, because he's the wizard. All right, let's see what the wizard's got for us today. That's Tinker. Um, I'm do you know how it's a cool these days not to be like strong sports type, but like Wait, smart, what? Yeah, smart type. Um, oh, man. Well, this is going to help us sorry, sort of get there. Yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. I, I just didn't know. I Okay. Um, this one's going to make you very popular with a lot of people because it is uh, How to Live Like Socrates. Oh. Um, yeah, because mm. and here's the thing. Here's what I'm excited about is that it worked out so good for Socrates. Yeah, being everybody Socrates, loved be, that guy. Being Socrates and being like how he is was really great for him. Um, yeah. Yeah, so let's, I mean, let's hop right into it because I think that the, some of this stuff is just timeless, right? So just start by reading some of Plato's dialogues. Actually, fuck that. That's so boring. Skip no, that that's part. Like, that's a no. bad, bad place to start. That's a wicked Where bad place it? to start. What about that? Um, can can you start with the movie? Oh the yes, one that, uh, yeah, Bill and the Ted. movie of the, the Keanu Reeves biopic. Um, is that right? No, no, no. The movie about Socrates uh, with um, Channing Tatum as Socrates. Right. They made like a biopic. Magic it Socrates. Biopic. Yeah. It was. I think it was called Magic Socrates. <laughs> um. <laughs> I think it was called Socrates. Hey, he's, I love that the end of the trailer when he looks at the camera, lowers the sunglasses, and he's like, I, "I guess you could say I'm pretty smart." Yeah, and it's like, yeah, I like that. Bill. And he looked down and said, "Nothing platonic about this relationship." Yeah, <laughs> and then he had <laughs> sex with everybody. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was a good flick. I wish I, I knew that. more about Socrates. I wish I knew more about Magic it. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so is yeah, you gotta read Plato's shit. I guess Plato was like a big Socrates fan. I'm gonna show my hand here. I don't know fuck all about this dude. Um, Which one? Yeah. Uh, I thought about tossing him a quick Google. <laughs> my boy, quick Google. Um, I, I know worry that that would throw off the metadata that Google has on me. Or be like, <laughs> yeah. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Normally, Travis is looking up the voice actors of the show Avatar: The Last Airbender, and suddenly he's. <laughs> Googling the You're, teachings of Plato? Do we need to start worrying about Travis being too smart? Oh, no, no, no. He's back to Googling voice actors of different cartoons. He's We're all good. Um, hey, here's the second one. And this is a good tip for like any sort of thing you're trying to do with your life is don't change your life immediately. Do it gradually. If you That's do it true. too fast mm. and you're like, I am now notice. fucking, I'm fucking Socrates now. Like you're going to burn out too fast. You got to really step into it. Um, uh, Griffin, is there a heading in there of what to do when you want to be uh, kind of considered like the Socrates of say, and this is just the top of my head, but like uh, soccer, so you can be Socrates and you're like the Socrates, you know, like the Socrates of soccer. Are, yeah. Is there any instructions in there? Because that's kind of what I've always thought of myself as. The Socrates like, of you know, soccer? Yeah. In yeah. that I bet he was also pretty bad at soccer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so just start with these plain, simple steps, okay? Wear simpler clothes. Ooh, that's going to be hard for me. Well, yeah, I'm, I don't know about I'm, that. Uh, I'm I'm kind a, of a peacock. Sort of a real clothes peacock. Eat plainer foods. That I can mm. swing with. I can hang with that. Yeah, that's good for advice for anybody. It'd probably be good for my belly. Um, and then do not waste your money on material things. Well, I'm fucked. That's it. I'm done. Well, uh, does that include like food? Uh, spicy foods, maybe foods that are not yeah. just very plain. Um, yeah, probably. So ne next tip is to follow Socratic principles and ideals. Again, it's a real snooze fest. Um, yeah, that feels like a lot of like research involved. Can't you just tell me? Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll sort of give you the Cliff's Notes version of it, and this is really where the article starts to maybe show how there are lots of people. Uh, especially on the internet, who follow Socratic principles and ideals, and that nobody likes them. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so just here's how to argue using the Socratic method. Question everything. Cool start. Mm. Um, do not merely take something at face value or do something because someone says so, whether it is one person or a hundred. Hey, can you stop? Oh, what? Hey, stop fucking being a reply guy and just like jumping in there whenever anyone says anything. And being an asshole and saying like, are you sure? But that's what Socrates does it. <laughs> that's what Socrates does it. Yeah, I think healthcare is a human right. Is it though? Thanks, Socrates. <laughs> I have to question it. 
uh, like everybody's out here saying it's cool to not die because you don't have enough money. Uh, but is it though? It's me, Socrates. <laughs> um, if you truly wish to live like Socrates, then you need to devote yourself entirely to philosophy and searching for truth. Which oh, if cool. you have a, that person's great too. That person's yeah. really cool. If you have a WikiHow membership, you're already halfway there, baby. You're Can already I just say there. right now. Uh, Socrates, right now, uh, what I've learned basically uh, in the last five minutes, is he seems like the type of person now who would say like, "I don't watch TV." Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't really want to talk to that person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, back in the day, I get it, right? If back in the day they're like. Oh man, we got to kill a hundred of our own people every year um, because the, or else the sun will devour us. And it's, it was probably good for Socrates to step in there and be like, uh, d- can I maybe <laughs> suggest that uh, we don't have to sacrifice our people um, because maybe the sun won't swallow us up? Uh, yeah, it is like we, that, back then we didn't know anything. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, question all of it. But now it's like, we got it. We got it. We got it. You know what? I'll take it one step further and say back in Socrates' time, it was also probably really easy not to buy material goods or eat spicy foods because the stuff they had was bunk. Uh, yeah. But now Socrates is like, yeah. did you see those fucking sneakers, dude? Like, I had to yeah, buy them. I had to they were them. really cool. And I just heard that this new Indian place opened up down the street. And gotta I got to check there. that shit out. Um, make sure where you debate with others is in a public area. I think Twitter Ooh. counts like that. Ooh. Man, there's a lot yeah. of people out there trying to be Socrates. Uh, never be afraid to voice what you think, or more importantly, the truth. Hey, it's cool hey, to conflate th- those Socrates two things. Socrates sucks. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, like, Socrates, I, I feel like those are different ideas. The truth and the things that <laughs> no, you No, no, no. I think it, it's important to be Socrates to know 100% whatever you think is right. <laughs> Question everything, unless it's one of your sweet yeah. thought bubbles. <laughs> Question everything except your own thoughts and ideas. Those <laughs> solid. Those truth, truth. Hey, here's a universal. This is a badass one, and maybe the most attainable, <laughs> attainable one. And that is number seven: never fear death. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Maybe that's, that's oh. Cool. Maybe Let that's, me flip this switch. Boom. Maybe okay. that, that's why Twitter reply guys are so cocksure all the time. It's because they yeah. don't spend uh, an hour of their day just thinking about, you know, death. And they're like, I have wondered how they get so much done. Yeah, they you know, yeah. bandwidth for other shit. But they don't fear death. Like, that's, that's daredevil shit. Like, uh-huh. Socrates is, was wasting his time with uh, all the philosophy and stuff. He should have been defending the innocent in Hell's Kitchen or whatever. Right. You know, they didn't have kitchens back then. One, or hell, one thing so. I do know no. about Socrates is he got sentenced to death for all of his cool thoughts. Uh, and <laughs> then the day before he got his his just desserts, he had a bunch of <laughs> buddies who swung by and they're like, Socrates, we're going to get you out of here, buddy. And he was like, nah, they got me. And then he drank him yeah. off and beefed it. His buddies were like, come on, dude, we got to go. Your brain is so special and you got to help. Nah, they got me fair and square, nah. guys. <laughs> I ain't scared. I ain't scared. Come they on. did a trial, fair and square. Yeah, but the trial was like a hundred extremely religious people who were like, no, he stinks. They got me. Go, 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 go. Bye. Also, I think it's a big assumption to assume that Socrates wasn't afraid of death just because he never wrote down like, fucking death has got me shitting myself, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like- maybe he was just so busy <laughs> thinking all of his cool thoughts that he just didn't even <laughs> think to buy. And so he guzzled down that sweet hemlock and then he was like, wait a minute, this is... This is what death. <laughs> Maybe he sucked so bad his friends handed him hemlock and were like, "Hey, this is like a wheatgrass shot." <laughs> and he was like, "Okay, you guys are gonna get me out of here?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, 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 you got it." But take that uh, wheatgrass shot first. And then they walked out and like, "Wait, I thought you guys were gonna go help Socrates." Oh, we tried. Yeah, we really tried. Alternatively, he said, his, alternatively, his friends were like, "Dude, you cannot beef it. That is going to stink." And he was like, "Well, I have to fucking question that. Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! I wasn't gonna. I didn't want to beef it." But now, and now everybody's uh, talking about how bad being dead is, and I was like, "Shit, I gotta question it, right?" I'm the great philosopher. <laughs> um, so great. I'm so great. Tim, uh, show humility. Yeah, that's not those uh, ideas don't really mishmash together. I don't trust well. anything you say, but hey, that's just me. Yeah, that's just me. That's just me. My thing that's is that me. truth is noble, and I've got it here in my pocket. <laughs>
Um, the next one is so boring, I don't even want to talk about it, but remember the Socratic paradoxes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah obviously. Yes. Uh, stick to your principles even in the face of death, as Socrates did, as described in Phaedo. Phaedo. Mm. Which I suppose now, is I, listen, a cool book. You all know me. I'm yeah. pretty cool, dude. Right? right? Very cool. If I'm facing death, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get out of there. You yeah, know what I mean? Sure, sure. I'll sign yeah. anything. I will say anything. I'll make fun of anybody. Yeah. And then later be like, I didn't. Nope, not true. I totally didn't. Yeah. But, anyways, I'm still eating this hamburger right here and <laughs> loving it. Uh, be sure to know thyself. That seems if you're of yeah, course that's yeah. Easy. I mean they should yeah, put that uh, you in clearly Eddie. don't though because you're like I know myself but I'd rather know myself as Socrates. No one knowing thyself is a lot easier when no one else really wants you to know them. Yes. Yeah. So it frees up a lot of like hey, I don't actually want to spend that much time letting you get to know me. So you should probably just know yourself. That's probably a better use of your time. Uh, and meet distinguished or influential people. Yeah, that's easy enough. Mm. Hey, okay. what's up? Is this Zach Braff? Come hear my cool thoughts. Zach Braff, you're going to love them. Uh, and finally, remember that truth is the most important thing ever, and you must do well. all you can to find it. That's, an, that's a cool one, because I don't think about things that way even a little bit. No. Like, I'm cool. Truth, to... wildly subjective and often incredibly hurtful. Well, I mean, it's good to not live in f fantasy times where you think that, you know, um, vaccines don't make you jump as good or whatever. Um, True. But there's also so much other cool shit you can do in the world, like ride a roller coaster or... Or VR experience. A, v a virtual like reality a experience. Yeah. Yeah, I can't dedicate all my time to, you know... Cracking open the Shel Shelby Woo mystery files. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got think, a lot on my plate right now. Do you think because Socrates didn't eat food with any flavor and didn't own cool shit, that's why he wasn't afraid of death? Mm. Because he was like, what am I even doing? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm filling my time with talking with you, with you Jags. Yeah. I can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> one of those stinkers that didn't like him <laughs> was like, you've never had spices? Dude, you gotta try this one. It's called Himlock. It's got good umami <laughs> potential. <laughs> 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 and you know oh, Plato you know Plato was waiting in the wings and he was like Plato is this you know more about flavors than I do is this cool and Plato was like definitely yep. go for it yeah I do. delicious make way old man what do you say I'm nothing I've written about uh, I've written a cool book about how cool you are even though you're dead and it's I'm kind of in it's in a holding pattern for obvious reasons <laughs> A lot of publishers interested, just waiting for the just finish. Waiting for, waiting yeah. for the ending. Uh, I would love to, look, we're gonna take a quick break right now. I wanna stop doing okay. the hard part of this job and do the easy part, which is selling, which is my true passion. Yeah. <laughs> is products. Uh, so let's do that now in a little segment we tend to call the money zone. Wrap yourself in a dream. That's mm. right. I'm telling you about Brooklinen. And here's what's great, is when you say Brooklinen, right? It kind of sounds like Brooklyn. You ever notice that? Yeah. Hi, I'm Travis McRoy, spokesperson and best friend of Brooklinen. They told me that they like me better than anyone else. Makes sense. And it's because I sleep on their sheets, not by force. My, no one's making me do it. I chose to do that it. That is what you would have to say, though. No, Griffin, I promise you, of my own volition and free will, I sleep on Brooklyn still and still things that you would say of being sort of... No forced. one is here making me. No one's standing right next to me telling me what to say with an earpiece and, like, some written notes that are scrawled in an angry hand, right? I am choosing to say of my own experience how comfortable and life ch life cha life changing Brooklyn and can be a lot of people think that their sheets don't stink okay but maybe yours do and you should check out Brooklyn and yeah that's okay. good hi Justin McElroy yeah no, what? Travis I'll Travis take, take a back seat uh Juice has got it from here I think <laughs> okay <laughs> we got a lot of ads to get through and honestly Travis is taking too long these are great sheets if you don't think so you don't know fuck all about comfort and Brooklyn's are great to give as a gift. Once you experience it, it is an actual mortal sin to not want to share it with other people you love. Yep. Uh, I I love every Brooklyn and thing I've ever owned more than my next breath. I mean, it is the, the more than Zach Braff. Me. 
more than Zach Braff, more than Braff Zachary, uh, all, more than Scrubs. Uh, what? Uh, I'm sorry. That's just the way I feel. Go. There's a gift guide so you can find the perfect present from Brooklyn at every price point. You just go to brooklinen.com, use the promo code MYBROTHER, and you can get $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's B R O O K L I N E N.com and enter promo code MYBROTHER. Brooklinen.com, promo code MYBROTHER. Uh, Justin, now that we're out of, out of the ad, do you want to take back what you said about Scrubs? Uh, yeah, I actually, they're not paying me anymore, so Scrubs is the best. It's oh, better than nice. sheets. Okay, great. I'm assuming they've already stopped listening, so. Clothes go on your body and make you look cool. They make you look not like everybody else who's wearing um, different different clothes. Your clothes are going to be better than theirs, though, because you're yeah. getting them from Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix is the best because you don't have to go to a building where they ha- are like, here's a million shirts. Most of them won't fit you good. And you're like, fuck. Uh, they do a quiz for you, but like a fun quiz where they're like, what you, what do you like? What size, what size is everything? And you tell them and then you get clothes specifically for your body, your style. Um, you, they also have a stitch fix freestyle where you can just pick stuff yourself from a range of over a thousand brands personalized though to your size and fit. And there's no subscription required. They offer free shipping, returns, and exchanges. Uh, you got to do it. You got to do it. I got a Stitch Fix box waiting for me downstairs. I haven't cracked open yet. Stoked out of my gourd. St- get started today by filling out your style quiz at stitchfix.com slash brother. That's stitchfix.com slash brother to try Stitch Fix freestyle. Stitchfix.com slash brother. Now, listen, we're going to talk about ZipRecruiter here. Um, and ZipRecruiter, listen, it's, it's not fun looking for a job. We've all done it. And you know what? I'm going to say it. It's it huffs farts, right? Yeah, big time. And ZipRecruiter has encouraged us now to talk about things we'd rather do instead of looking for a job. Um, and I I would rather here he goes eat Get out of its way the space needle slowly one bite at a time over ten years than look for a job. But now that I've said that, I think eventually I could probably turn that into money or get arrested. I don't even know, you know? Right. Like. Definitely. So what? Uh, quick, I'm going to do a really fun game right here for our listeners. If you can tell me what this ad is about, like what the company this ad is for after the last minute of this show, and it hasn't like completely glazed over and lost your, like exited your brain, I will send you, I will send you two dollars and 50 cents. Because there's no way. Like, I'm I'm part of the show, and I forget what the advertiser is. It's about of, how to eat the space needle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, what's the company that gives the us... The ad, the person who wrote the check. Right. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, well, it's ZipRecruiter. And, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be boring to look for a job. They figured out how to make the job process better and a lot easier. When you sign up for ZipRecruiter.com slash easy right there. You can create a free profile and get matched to great jobs. Plus, ZipRecruiter will proactively pitch your profile to employers whose jobs match your experience, which is amazing, right? You don't have to do all the work. They're here helping you. Unlike other job sites, if an actual person from the company really likes what they see, they can personally invite you to apply for their job. Plus, if you like the job, you can apply to it and many others with just one click. It's that easy. So what are you waiting for? If you want an easy job search, sign up for free on ZipRecruiter.com slash easy today and put ZipRecruiter to work for you. There's no better place to start than ZipRecruiter.com slash easy today. Well, hello. I'm Renee Colvert. Hi, I'm Alexis Preston. And we are the hosts of Can I Pet Your Dog? And we got breaking news. We got an expose. And all the beans have been spilled via an Apple podcast review that said this show isn't well researched. <gasps> well, yeah, no duh. Of course it's not. Not since the day we started has it been well researched. Guessing and anthropomorphizing dogs is what we do. The Can I Pet Your Dog promise is that we will never do more than 10 seconds of research before telling you excitedly about any dog we see. I'm going to come at you with top 10 enthusiasm, minimal facts. We're here for a good time, not an educated time. So if you love dogs and you don't love research, (laughs) well, you know what? Come on in to Can I Pet Your Dog podcast every Tuesday on Maximum Fun Network. Hey, now that ZipRecruiter's gone, you remember when we said they told us we could talk about things we'd rather do than look for a job? Yeah. They included four examples. And the second one is eat dry, salty crackers. Yeah. Do they know? Do they know about you and the stuff you're into? 
Do they know it's about like, your dry your, sensibilities? It's like someone who's never struggled. <laughs> I feel like it's this, this was written by someone who's never had actual challenge in their life. Because like eating dry, salty crackers, that might have, might not even be a negative. Yeah, some people some people like those. I mean, I they like also included like watching a documentary about sea slugs, which I would happily do. They're fascinating creatures. Yeah, and yeah. like it also says to hear about my mother-in-law's bunion surgery, which, like, sorry that I'm concerned uh, about Yeah, sorry that health. I love my mother-in-law so much, and she's mother, in yeah. pain, and Gen- she had Gen- surgery? Gen- yeah. What? I said, uh, Oh, spooky. I want a munch squad. But I want to munch. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast of the podcast profile of the latest and greatest in brand eating. It is no longer being sunset. It has been revived for season five. So I'm so excited to have Now on Netflix. It's been it's been picked up. Uh it's now streaming. Uh, it, it wasn't right for broadcast television anymore, but thanks to all of you who sent in your old uh, yeah. hamburger wrappers, uh, they As picked it up on Quibi. Arby's, I just want to, this is quick, but it's like Arby's is going to launch boneless wings for a limited time this week. Neat. And I just want to say like, they've already got nuggets, yeah. so actually fuck off. Yeah. You know fair. what I mean? Like, they've actually, this kind of thing really... <laughs> Okay. I think that was it. Hey, boys. Hello. Sorry. I have to take care of just two in a row. Talk, Count down. Well, it's a, a very regular. I know. And also, Griffin, a limited window where we can yeah, have Count Donut on and it makes any kind of sense. Yeah, that's fair. Well, oh, boys, you're never going breaking. to. I've got the pipe. This is late breaking. Is exactly it. I'm very frustrated. And when oh. I'm angry, I don't. Always sound like myself. So I'm going to bring the energy down, but no, I'm holding back the rage with everything in my body. Okay. All right, what's... what? Uh, what's? I am Count Donut. Yeah, we... Yes. Wow, you we know. know. Yeah. I am called and summoned, if you will, when Donut News is breaking in this segment. And last week... Is the I killing of you... Justin part of that, or is that just for funsies? I, I inhabit Justin's body, and I ah. need it. The function. Huh. So here's the thing. That's a Last new wrinkle in the vampire kind of mythology, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> well, it's Justin centric. Me and me and Richard Stink share <laughs> the vessel when we need to. Huh. Last week, I actually bumped into Richard in here. It was awkward. We shared a nice uh, cup of tea. It was pleasant. Enough. You know, people often Still ask, and I just start. At the latest episode of My Brother, My Brother, and Me, and I would say, like, oh, you'll be so confused without all the backstory of the different things that inhabit Justin's body. But go on. The mythology. So, you know, last week I brought you the incredible story of uh, all the different Halloween donuts. Yeah, Krispy Scream. All Krispy Scream. <laughs> you scared me with that. Yeah, yeah. I, know. I wasn't even ready for it. You scared me. Well, I was ready to go back into my coffin and die for another year. Because in Justin's body? No, the spirit is in a coffin. Yeah. Ah, it okay. comes out. It's like you don't know right. fucking anything, Travis. I'm just trying to catch it up for people at home. Right? The, but then someone lays across my desk that I have, which is my coffin. Okay. <laughs> the top of my coffin, I call it. Like, I like that. Are you like, do you live in like a tiny house? And you just like, you're very sort of it's efficient. A, well, it's a coffin, which is a tiny house. Yes. Yeah, so oh, so it's a sort of all sense. in one living or unliving experience. If you're trying to ask me if I poop in there, I'll never tell. I don't Sounds like you are. do, though. <laughs> like you definitely so, do. Okay. So, guess, this is killing me. Let me get this off my chair. Yeah. Tim Horton. Do you know this man? Yeah. yeah. Canadian. Mm-hmm. I, think he, I think he's a hockey player. They do the name after him. They put out an announcement. On October 19th, that they have a Halloween sprinkle donut. And I am so furious <laughs> at these guys. <laughs> this Halloween sprinkle donut, so festive, yes? It's available October 27th. Huh. Begins October 27th, this Halloween sprinkle donut. And you don't like. But listen to this. Y- listen to okay. this. Okay. 
for your Halloween spirit. Tim Hortons U.S. restaurants are celebrating Halloween this year with all treats and no tricks. I would say it's mean trick to wait till October 27th. The Halloween sprinkle donut is a classic yeast ring donut dipped in chocolate fondant and topped with festive orange sprinkles. Oh my! Chilling! Yeah. What a festive thing you've done! It's chocolate with orange sprinkles? That's a little too much for me, even. You're in the spirit now, oh boy! And you say it's available for three whole days! Oh boy! Look at look at the Frankenstein over here, really getting into it! This festive donut will make the perfect sweet to serve at Halloween parties or delicious treat to enjoy while carving pumpkins and making costumes. Mm-hmm. Like, th- yes. this, person, <laughs> this person definitely forgot about Halloween, is what yes. they're saying. They definitely forgot. Oh, yeah, we've got one. It's good. <laughs> Wait until you hear about it. It's available in a week, and it's a chocolate donut with orange sprinkles. We've been working on this one for a while. Yeah. The boy is an R and D. The D stands for death. They really spooked you out with this one. It's a real crazy, scary donut. You wouldn't believe it. They definitely forgot Tim. Just say, put out the nonsense that says, "Oops, <laughs> 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 oops, we didn't do Halloween this year." I hope you'll in these challenging times. We forgot to do this Halloween donut. You do- don't try. I'm furious. This is what I want to say. This is all. It's a terrible donut. It's, but the good news is it's not available for very long. So anyway, I'm back to the beyond. Goodbye, boys. I'm not... Wait, bye. Okay. bye. How does he bring well, Justin back? No, do you need... No, I, do you need me? Or? I, no. just, I don't want to let them... I, you know, I don't just do donut stuff. I have a lot of great... You guys want to talk about Dune? It's coming out. Yeah, tell me your no, vampire thoughts Dune about fan. Dune. Yeah. I've I wanted to read the book, but who's got the time? Yeah, yeah maybe you should it? go. My joke was good. I had the it was pretty come immortal, you see. So oh I, oh, oh, I didn't get it at first, but now I definitely do. Awesome. More of a that's the kind of comedy I do. More thinkers. I have been, I've loved your stand up sets. Oh, okay. He's gone. Hey, I'm back. I'm getting used to it. Being you know what? Weirdly. Socrates? Yeah. I get it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, don't fear it's not too bad, honestly, being being basically dead. It's not it's not bad. Cool. Okay. Cool thing. I no longer fear it. Yeah, How about awesome. another question? Hey, can I read a question? I never get to read a question. Yeah, I'd uh, love I uh, wait. Hold on. Are you ready for this level of responsibility, Griffin? I mean, I'm I read and make up bullshit questions throughout the show now. Well, that's a little different, like. isn't it? Because now you're using real people's Here real it comes. words. Okay. Uh, My cousin is getting married on Halloween this year. Small family wedding, vaccine required, all chill. Thank you for including that, because I was ready to judge. The invitation does not list any dress code, and I have no idea how much Halloween cheer I should bring to the event. The couple is very nerdy, into board games, D&D, video games, etc., but they're not specifically Halloween nerdy. They chose Halloween because my cousin's birthday is on April Fool's Day, so they thought it'd be cool if their anniversary was also on a pseudo-holiday. They're even getting married on a classy beach. Oh. Surely I don't just wear a normal dress to a Halloween wedding, but a costume also has to be out of the question, right? Can I get away with a fancy witch's hat, a cape, a broom, from Confounded in California? Uh, this, uh, this one is tough. I actually yeah. have no... Absolutely no idea. I don't I know. Yeah, I don't know anything about weddings or Halloween or clothes. Yeah. I uh, oh, you know who I could call? Who? Mister Halloween himself. Uh huh. The the king of horror, as I yeah. call him. Mm hmm. The king of podcasting horror. The Duke of Doom. <laughs> the Duke of yeah. Doom. The Sultan of <laughs> Scares. Yeah, and SWAT <laughs> and SWAT. Yeah, let's five see. more, five more no, of them. Oh, good, Joseph Fink. Okay. He's one of the Nightfall guys. There's a lot. They got a. They got a whole writers' room over there, but he's one of them. Hold on, I have a um, a yellow book of fellow New York Times bestselling authors. Let me look yeah. at it. <laughs> Hold on, let me. I oh, know that's Hank Green. If you can't find, him, let's just do Dan Brown. Yeah, Dan. No, no, here he is. Here he is. Hold on, I'll call. Him. Beep, boop, beep, boop, 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 boop,
Hi, this is Mr. Halloween, the king of horror podcasting. <laughs> oh, hey, Joseph. <laughs> hey, Joseph. It's, uh, you don't, it's Justin McElroy. We do, uh, my brothers and I do a different, a, a different podcast. My brother, my brother, and me. I don't know if you've, we sure, did PodCon sure, yeah, yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. Is it PodCon? Yeah. It's like Pod a not con. scary. Uh, I know this. Oh, is not sure. Deep. Not scary podcast. Yeah, not all podcasts are. They're form. supposed to be scary ghost ghosty tales. So, ours is so well, ours is for them. babies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so you've been kind of the king of horror for years now. What would you? We had a qu- qu- we do advice on our show, and we had a, a someone ask us what they would wear to a Halloween um, wedding, and we were curious what would be an appropriately ghoulish ensemble uh, for that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I through kind of through the uh, the ether, I, I heard the question, and I I, that I just want to be so distracting. You living your daily <laughs> life, hearing all podcast awful. questions, like a real Bruce Almighty, but for podcast <laughs> bullshit. I just want to first address pseudo holiday. Thank you. Pseudo oh, yeah. holiday. Mm. Yeah, like mm. like it's Halloween. This isn't. Halloween. This isn't. I mean, April Fool's Day. I, I get, but. Hall- like respect Halloween. I do understand because, as far as I know, not a federal holiday. You don't get Halloween off yeah, from your like, job. It's it's. I mean, it's, it's one of the big three. It's, it's one a of the huge biggies. holiday. I, it's one of the. I will ones. tell you, as a Jew, that there are a lot of important holidays you do not get off. This is fair. <laughs> from the, yeah. Federal it's government. An excellent point. And yeah. I, you know, I said that you don't technically get off work, but nothing gets done on Halloween in a workplace, right? Everybody's oh, sure. they're eating yeah. candy and wearing costumes and doing fun games. I assume. I, I mean, don't know. I don't, on yeah. a day when your sister could turn into a bat, right? And gremlins could mess up all your cassettes. Like, how yeah. are you supposed to get any work done? It's too anything. scary. Yeah, anything could happen. Way too scary. Uh, to address the question, though, I mean, I, I feel like you they... don't actually have to do that. Don't feel it. We no. rarely do. <laughs> but if you want to take a swig at it for for the novelty, please go ahead. Well, they they found the answer, I think, themselves, which is an elegant witch's hat. Sounds yes. perfect. I mean, that's perfect for most occasions. This is true. What if you I take, mean, you go indoors though? Is it, it what if there's an indoors portion of the wedding? You have to take it off, then you just have matted witch hat hair. Well, you have you a smaller have hat underneath. Okay, okay. Or is an it, owl. There you go. <laughs> no one's noticing your hair at that point. Yeah, yeah. And if they the do, owl. they'll blame it on the owl. Yeah, sorry about now my I'm hair, just guys. picturing like the national anthem happens and someone has to take off their elegant witch's hat and hold oh, man. <laughs> you know Disney bounding where people yes. dress like you're not allowed to wear costumes to the parks, so people will dress up in like outfits inspired by characters that they You are so, reading my mind. So like for for Winnie the Pooh, you would wear like a red t-shirt and like and no pants. No, no pants. pants. Sort of like, your it's not a costume, just, just hanging. Like, yeah. So for this, I think you'd want to do like Halloween bounding, where it's like yeah. doffing your cap to Frankenstein. You know what I mean? Like an elegant bolt on your, uh, two elegant bolts on your neck. Listen, I'm just going to say two words that you could Halloween bound. Sanderson sisters. Right okay. there, a little hocus pocus action. Those dresses could easily, easily translate to a, an elegant, now it is a beach wedding, so maybe not an elegant ball gown, this which is, is what, what I was going to say. Up. Yeah. It, that's the least terrifying environment, unless you are afraid of sea creatures, as I am, but I doubt yeah. that there's going to be a swimming portion of the wedding, right? So, like, it's not going to be, it's tonally strange. Yes. Could you, could you, could you, Halloween bound, like, a mermaid or a shark or a shark victim. The creature something from the Black Lagoon. Yes, there you possible. go. Good idea. Something very aquatic. Uh, dis- uh, maybe just dress as a shell, and you're laying on the beach the whole time. They're like, oh, I can't believe that you know Sandy didn't make, didn't make it. it. And then Sand- boom, you wait, pop no, up. Sorry, wait, wait, wait. No, no, yeah, I know. Out. Yes, is I it know. Sandy, because you were thinking beach, so Sandy yeah. is the name you got to. Yeah, yeah, it is, Justin. Nothing wrong it with is. That. Thank you. Okay. And then the shell pops up, but it's you. I could have said Shelly. Damn it. If you have a wedding on Halloween, I feel like you have to address that. Yes. In the invitations. You've been set up to fail here. You should have mentioned that invitations. Look, we know what day this is. Do not show up dressed up like a big Pikachu. I th- that's fucked up. I think it, I think it is uh, morally indefensible to have a wedding on a day that is 
most well known here in the U.S. as a day that one dresses in costume and to say, I expect you to be there and not in costume. Right. That yeah. feel if it, then why did you do it like un, unless you just decided to get married two weeks ago. Right. And then otherwise, you knew you planned it on Halloween. Just do it on Thanksgiving or something. Like, no, it's a weird thing. Yeah, that's sort of the premise of the show. Oh, Here, right. Here's right, where right. I'm at. It's like, f- fellas, we, we've all been married. Yeah. It, it's a day of joy. It's a, yeah. it's a very happy day. So, like, you know, if someone shows up dressed as a giant Pikachu, I'm, I'm fine with that. That's, that's an expression of joy. Like, what, am yeah. I going to be upset about someone doing something they love on this joyful day? Well, I guess the real question, Joseph, is would you let them into the pictures? That is a fucking actually fantastic question. My friend Eric came to our wedding, and this was during a period where he had, I would say, the most perverted mustache (laughs) any human being has ever grown on his face. And this was for, he had this mustache for two months, so it was not like iconic Eric pervert mustache. It was like something he grew on a dare and then is in every single one of the like crowd shots of the wedding photos. <laughs> and it's like, it's hard not to, when you look at, oh, there's my nanny and she's, t- she's talking to our friends. That's so, ah, oh, fuck. There look at, is. look at, look at, there he is trying to, he's going to steal my grandma with that mustache. Well, this is especially, this occurs to me now, especially if, question asker, you decide to go with a very topical costume and you're like, get it? I'm from Squid Game or whatever. And then like 20 years from now, oh this person's God, kids yes. are like looking at the photos and like, this is so beautiful. Here. Oh, your friend, what, what is that? And you're like, oh, it was from, oh, what was that? Uh, <laughs> Joseph, what's your favorite character from your own podcast to cosplay as? Good question. Uh, I like uh, Cecil because no one knows what he looks like, so mm. I am always cosplaying as, as Cecil at all times. Whoa. Whoa, uh, it's possible deep. that all of us are. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Right. I got it! Guys, I got it! I got it! I got it! Okay, all right. Mamoru Chiba, Tuxedo Mask! Oh! Yeah! Tuxedo so, Mask of Sailor Moon fame, you go as Tuxedo Mask. You arrive, elegant cape. Tuxedo. Nice. Yes. Everyone's loving it. Yes. White mask in your pocket. Oh! <laughs> and, then, right? and then you get there and you check the vibe. You have the rose in the back pocket. You're ready right. to, d- to dress out if the situation is one where tuxedo mask would be appropriate. If not, yes. you leave the, the mask in your pocket and you're just someone in a very elegant tuxedo. Right, sure. What I like about that is it addresses my concern, which is the inverse uh, sort of fear, which is that you show up in your, you know, Sunday best, but then you show up and everybody's Squid Game and Pikachu. And you're like, shit, I didn't realize we were having fun with this one because it's a wedding. Oh, okay, wait. This isn't an answer for the question asker, but if you are a wedding thrower and you're ever in this exact situation, instead of one side for one participant and one side for the other, you have a side of the audience for costumes and a side of the audience for squares. That's good. And then you get two photographers, one angling from the squares side. Oh, and you? Oh, the two participants? You're wearing half costume, half wedding clothes, so that when they take pictures from this side, it's all wedding, baby. And then pictures from this side, all spooky Halloween fun. Hey, Joseph, you got a new book coming out? I feel like we have (laughs) this person. We have this person enough. You got a new book coming out? Uh, It's a good question. I I do. Uh, You often do. Okay. Thank you. That answers my question. Thank you, Joseph. And thank you for coming on. So glad to keep (laughs) No, wait. I need to know the title of it so that I can sleep tonight. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, It's called The Halloween Moon, coincidentally. And (gasps) uh, it's a middle grade novel about Halloween and and the experience of trick or treating and then also the experience of when Halloween night never ends and it just keeps going and going and time gets stuck and you have to. uh, Save the day because you're stuck in Halloween forever. Uh, it's out now. It's a great, great time to read it. I mean, it's it's for ages ten and up, but I think adult fans who like the spooky and maybe like Welcome to Night Vale will really enjoy it too. Who read the audio? Oh, Kevin R. Free from who plays Kevin on Welcome to Night Vale and is uh, just a truly wonderful performer. Oh, excellent! That sounds very good. Is this a follow up to Mister Bone Clown's scarifying adventure? Your last. 
your last book? I think of it more as a spiritual sequel. Yeah. So there's yeah. ghosts yeah. in it. You're saying there's ghosts in it. Because the Mr. the Mr. Bone Clown series, like usually you get his name in the in the title. So I was confused <laughs> about this one. I really I felt like stretching myself this time trying something new. <laughs> Joseph, are you getting ready to pull them all together with the references from one book appearing in the other series until eventually you, the author, appear in one and like reveal that it's all been connected and stringing forth from your mind? Uh, yes, I'm, it's it's a uh, um, it's the shared Finkiverse. Now, I, <laughs> yeah, Joseph, you 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 wrote if I'm if I can let me check my yeah this is thirty seven scare gobblers books for kids and you're finally departing from the scare gobblers series. Why yeah. is this? I guess why is the Halloween Moon available now? Not uh, in the scare gobblers franchise. Uh, in answer to your question, I'm just going to tell you my favorite anecdote I ever heard from the Goosebumps guy. Uh, I was listening to an interview with R.L. Stein in which he was talking about a fan letter he got after having written, I think, over 200 books. And the fan letter said, I've read all of your books and they're all terrible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's commitment to the bit, isn't it? You think R.L. Stein's one guy? Whoa. Oh, you think it's like a Shakespeare thing? That Shakespeare wrote them? No, yeah. Shakespeare wrote. Shakespeare, Shakespeare wrote, wrote Goosebumps. <laughs> uh, hey, the Howley Moon is good. I love all of your books, Joseph. You know that I, I, after I read one of your books, I like to tell you that I liked it, and this I'm sure will be no exception uh, for all of our listeners. They're gonna love it. You know what I love? Joseph wrote a book called The First Ten Years with uh, his wife Meg Bashweiner, and they, that is a very good book as well. It's uh, both of them are calling their relationship independently. Uh, and how those stories overlap is very touching and lovely, and uh, I love that book too. So if, if you if you read the Halloween Moon and you want something exactly like it, um, <laughs> check out that that book as well. Thank you so much, guys. And Night Vale, are you guys still doing that? I feel like yeah. <laughs> I, we're listen, about we're to in, hit we're our ten year anniversary. Yeah, we're in that club where it's like. We very justifiably, if people hear about either of our podcasts, I think, are you guys still doing that as a completely legitimate response yeah, to my, yeah, brother, yeah. my brother, me, and Night Vale? A tweet I get literally weekly, if not daily, is, wait, Night Vale is still happening? It's better than ever. Now's the best time to hop on board, wouldn't you agree? What do you tell people if they're like, where do I start? Because you don't want to go back to, the, I mean, I guess you have to go back to the beginning. Do y'all you, you ever do that? Like, do you ever do like Marvel does and do like a, co- a universe reset? Our, our argument is always you can start wherever because, yes, it's confusing if you start at episode 170, but it's also confusing if you start at episode one. You, you, yep. You'll get it eventually. Just start mm. where you want. Good. I like to start in the middle and listen out. So, like, listen to one next and one before and then keep going like that oh, that's uh, nice. and then back in until the universe collapses in on itself. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joseph, this, is always, this has always been a treat. Um, listen to Joseph's work and read Joseph's work and support him because he's uh, a real solid person. Joseph, can I tell you something? I've never told you before and we've known each other for years now, Um, but I I didn't want to miss this opportunity to tell you. Uh, When I started listening to Night Vale for a long, long time, I thought Joseph Fink was a character that you created to play at the beginning of every episode introducing it. I did not realize you were a real person for many years. A lot of people did because we did this. We did this fun joking thing where we had multiple people pretend to be be like, "Hi, I'm Joseph Fink," and I I just thought it would be a fun way to get people to listen to the ads. Um, mm-hmm. And then it turned into yeah, people. It's a, I'm that's fictional. actually Joseph Fink is his SAG name uh-huh. um, because there already was a Joey Funk, which is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is his real name. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Joey Funk changed to Bruno Mars, which is very yeah. frustrating. <laughs> which know? is very upsetting. Because you could have just stayed Joey Funk. And yeah. the original Joseph Fink had to change his name to Finkasaurus Rex. But all of his albums are available on Spotify now. So, yeah, get there. Hey, Joseph, thanks uh, for for everything. Thanks for being here. And thanks for the help. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Boy, can you take this was fun just one more time, but really put a little bit more? more <laughs> <fine>. <laughs> I, I could feel if you could just give me that, like one more punch up of that. Thanks so much for having me. This this was fun. <laughs> that was much even better. much better. Much better. <laughs> Maniacal. Thank you so much to Joseph uh, Fink. His new book, 
Uh, the Halloween Moon is available now, along with all of his other books. And if you don't listen to Welcome to Night Vale, you really actually should. You really, yeah, what are you even of, doing? Yeah. It's so good and funny and good. Um, we have an Adventure Zone live show. It's live oh. and virtual November 5th. Um, so make sure you get your tickets to that because it's going to be an absolute blast. November 5th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Tickets are only $10. Uh, it is the third installment of Adventure Zone Hoot Nanny uh, with your favorite space age country band. Um, tickets are available at bit.ly slash Taz Virtual. And even if you can't make it to that November 5th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time show, video on demand will be available for two weeks after the show. Speaking of tickets... Get your tickets for our Emerald City Comic Con show. They go on sale Thursday, October 28th at noon Pacific time. Uh, that is uh, some shows in Seattle at the Emerald City Comic Con convention. Uh, my Brother, My Brother and Me, December 2nd, and Taz on December 3rd. Both shows will be general attendance, so no assigned seating, but there will be ADA seating uh, available. You don't need an Emerald City Comic Con badge to buy tickets to these shows. Uh, and it's also important to note, Emerald City Comic Con safety protocols require full proof of vaccination or recent negative COVID test to attend. Full safety protocols are available if you want to see what all those are at bit.ly slash E-C-C-C safety. That's E followed by three C's and the word safety. In addition, masks are required while on the premises and capacity will be reduced. Uh, for more info, including all full health and safety protocols, as well as ticket links, you can go to bit.ly slash McElroy tour. Uh, we got a pin of the month. It's Hell Raven, which is Del Craven, benefiting the National Latina Institute for Reproductive Justice, which builds Latina and Latinx power to fight for the fundamental human right to reproductive health, dignity, and justice. We got Taz Notebooks. Yep. We got Canonite's wrapping paper. Yep. I mean, it's like, just go to McElroyMerch.com and, and rub your wallet on the screen and get ready. Yep. Yeah. There's We got some... <laughs> Some stuff coming too. That's I'm really excited about. Yeah, I mean, don't save your, but don't, don't save, save your money. money. Thanks no, don't save your money. Say, Dang it! Don't save just your money. More, but just make more money. Just yeah, and then give it there. to us. <laughs> hey, thank you, Montaigne, for the use of our theme song. Uh, it's called "My Life Is Better With You." You can find that in in d d any sort of music pit, like trough that you go to to get the music that you get. Yeah. Um, and while yeah. you're out there. Also, you got to check out this new track from Montaigne. Now in space. It's called it's Now so in good. Space. The music video is is on YouTube and it's so fucking good. It's a contender. It, it, it feels schedule. like Montaigne made the music video for the three of us to enjoy. It, yeah. it feels like a DM music video and it's so fucking good. It's been stuck in my head it's all great. day. It's a, it's a top bop. Um, and that's it. Y'all want the final? Yeah. Oh, oh, real quick. Yeah, this sure. Is, if you guys, if you are listening to this and you enjoy Great British Bake On, Teresa and I have been doing a watch and kind of discussion podcast of Great British Bake On. This is season it's two. It's called Great British Bake. You're so British deep Bake in Off. it. It's called Great British Bake Off. Oh, yeah. Bake Off. It's called Great British Bake Off, but the name of the show is Bake On. Uh, and, you know, we're covering the new season. If you want to check that out, just search for Bake On in your podcatcher and enjoy. Um, okay. Y'all want the final? Yes, please. Oh, yeah. yeah cool. This one was sent in by Alf. <laughs> huh. I want you guys to know that sometimes I just start, I, st I say like a phonetic sound yeah. <laughs> and then just like try to build it in real time. And no Alf one's surprised by that revelation. Oh, okay, Griffin. cool, like, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, and by that, I mean, I'm you can reading. hear, you can actually hear your loading screen in your brain as you do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Alf sent this in. Thanks, Alf. It's asked by Yahoo Answers user, Dan... Hmm. Denet, Deness, Deness. It, it's Deness, <laughs> Deness Quaid. Um, it's just <laughs> wild. <laughs> it's wild that it like specifically says here to say Deness Quaid. Um, so we've which, all been saying it wrong all these years. We've all been wrong, and uh, Deness Quaid says. Um, Deness Quaid asks. Yeah. I'm having trouble reading because I'm translating it from Sanskrit. I don't oh, know. really? Yeah, I didn't even know Yahoo allowed you to do Sanskrit. Dinesh Quaid asks, um, are there, does anyone have tickets for sale for the big 
New Year's Eve Hoobastank concert in 2021. <laughs> trying to get out there, but I don't have as much sway as I used to. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for your support. <laughs> this has been my brother. My Love, Dennis Quay. My name's Justin McElroy. <laughs> I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad. School wear on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.